here. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite scientist who was so preoccupied with whether they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. It's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the perfect effect gorilla which is their take on optimal optimus which is from beast wars season three apparently shout out to robert d he gave me a little bit of background on the character i have watched beast wars but my if, if you know me you know my memory's not the best i can see why i chose to forget this but that's neither here nor there we are going to talk about this figure not the character that would be a whole different sort of discussion i should also say this is on loan to me from mr e.m tyler a good friend of mine a personal friend of mine and he dropped it off to me in person he hit me up said he had this and a couple other things which we'll be looking at soon on the way and asked me if i'd be interested i wasn't really interested but i thought you guys might be so i said yes the things i do for you that being said let's talk about the accessories which are few it is mainly this gun in a gimmick and we'll cover both of those right now so as you can see he holds it fairly well um, it's actually quite easy to get in due to the transformation gimmick but we'll get to that we'll get there uh, but he holds it no problem and it pegs in with a typical masterpiece styled peg in on the let me get this guy out of the way on the uh, the handle there it's actually the peg is facing forward instead of back, which I think actually makes it easier to plug in. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, the gold paint is on there. The silver paint is on there and it's a decent sculpt. I wish you could, uh, I guess this is like another laser. I don't know anything about this. Who am I kidding? But I wish this was like something you could rack, you know, but whatever. Either way, it's good. And the other thing are these, which rotate up from the back. It's more of a gimmick than an accessory, but I feel like it kind of works to talk about now. Silver paint here and here, both done well. There is something that I find troubling. I'm not sure if it's the case. I'm just, I just don't know. But it, either they were cut off the, the sprue here, you see here and here, and they were just left kind of looking relatively ugly in that regard. Or they had tabs on them that plug into there and there, which it almost seems like they should, but because they're two pieces that come together, I'm not sure that they would. That being said, these pieces here on the shoulder go into there and there, so either way it holds it securely, but uh, it just it does seem like there should have been something else there. Either way, it's not a big deal, it's just something that I'm bringing up in case uh, there is an issue. And since this is another gimmick, I might as well cover it now. This uh, canopy here does open, and I guess that's his spark or whatever that you can have a go with. So let's talk about this guy. The head is on a ball peg, but the neck is built up underneath, so most positions you're going to find look just fine. The blue is paint, the silver is paint, and the green is paint. And they did a great job with the paint per usual. That's one thing Perfect Effect never seems to struggle with. So we, you get the swivel, you get up to there. You get a good bit down, which I think is important for bigger bots. And of course you get the swivel, the confused dog look, whatever your little heart desires in that regard. Now we have to talk about these shoulders, which are interesting. So I'm going to expose the joint. You have a swivel here that's a, a soft ratchet. You have an outward hinge here. Uh, and then you have this piece blue, this blue piece here, which is also painted, that you can move out. So you can get a great range. And I didn't cover this, so I have to cut it in. There is a butterfly joint on a hinge right there that's really effective and you can get the arm all the way across uh, the chest so that's nice the problem is is that due to transformation the stuff gets all wonky in here and i'm not gonna mess with it too hard but like when i had his gun in his hand it it tends to want to bring all this down there it's a complicated design and sometimes it creates for a frustrating experience, but everything ultimately works. Do you know what I mean? So you can't really knock them for it because it, it does work at the same time, though, it doesn't work quite the way you would want it to. That being said, this purple or this maroon color has a finish, it seems, and then the silver is all painted, the green is painted, the gold is painted throughout. So all the detailings work really well. And this piece is ratchet here as well. It's just, it's just a lot going on. 
now this like this joint it does move and you can just kind of it, it hinges out here so you can cover down on the joint as you articulate it i just think it's something to to, to say that it is it can be rather a little frustrating to work with that being said it does work bicep swivel you have it looks like it's a single jointed elbow but it gets you past 90 degrees so i think that's fine detailings here this almost seems yeah it does it has a finish on it the silver has a finish on it, and then it has silver detailings painted on it like a gun metal and then the gold is painted on it on both sides this wing here you can sort of have it it hinges here and it rotates so you can you know manipulate that to wherever you would like it it also has that finish and then it has the green paint and gunmetal paint throughout so no problems there the wrists swivel they don't hinge i don't think no but the thumb hinges here mainly for transformation it also swivels and you get one hinge at the thumb joint all the fingers are individually articulated i believe yes and then hinge at the base knuckle and second knuckle which i think is more than fine and i think for individually articulated fingers which i think i have come around on now as long as they're hinged i think it works well same for the other side and it looks like the maroon here once again is painted on on the hand so let's talk about the backpack uh it's fine the silver we've already talked about green paint there silver accents down there gold accents there if you unplug this you can get the waist swivel it's a little loose but it still serves its purpose so let's keep that in mind and we'll plug that in just for the sake of finishing this overview so we have these pieces here they're on ball pegs you can move them out of the way in order to get to the hips but before we do let's talk about all the paint that's up in here we got gunmetal paint gold paint not the cleanest right there but it's not hateful either silver paint silver paint on the chest green paint gunmetal paint gunmetal paint on the canopy so tons of paint work throughout no complaints in that regard I'm talking about the hips they're universals ratcheted hard ratchets out that's going to get you the van dam hard ratchets forward that gets you past the full monty but it is heavy so if you don't have it right on the click it's not going to hold finish on the silver gunmetal silver painted on thigh swivel built into the universal all that works well we have a single jointed knee but it gets you 90 degrees so no issues there on the outside of the joint is painted with silver and gold silver and gold and then we have the green paint painted on the silver paint painted on gold paint everywhere for accents all of this is painted like the the maroon has the finish and then the orange is painted and the orange matches up fairly well i'd say so all that's done really well silver is painted on there gold paint on the back of here not necessary but they did it so that's a bonus the feet you got a tilt it's a it looks like a universal joint that's going to work really well so you got a tilt all the way down not really anything up you have a toe swivel you have an outward uh big toe swivel and it swivels at the joint so that could theoretically work for some poses you have the finish on the die cast feet silver and gold painted on there the finish here and then you have a rocker on a hinge not the greatest range but you use the toe swivel in addition to it and it should get you everything you possibly want so ultimately it all works that's kind of a reoccurring theme here not everything works the way you want it to necessarily but everything ultimately does work in robot mode size comparison wise there he is with mp10 and mp lambor i don't have any beast wars masterpieces so i can't tell you how he scales with them but i will measure it for you if you want to do it yourself he's about he's just about 10 and a half inches to the tip of, of his ears which makes him about 26 centimeters so let's get him transformed open up this piece here just get the wing out of the way and then this piece you can see has already come partially untabbed 
you want to open it up all the way it accordions out and then this piece comes down and it tabs back in it's hard to show exactly where but you will hear it there and then for the hand take the thumb turn it to the other side and then turn the whole hand around right yes so that it's all backwards a lot of this transformation is just turning things inside out almost or backward so once again we'll open this up here if you see those two gray tabs in there, that's what locks on to the shoulder. And then you want to open this up, accordion this out rather, and then push this back on and they're gonna notch into there. Same thing with the thumb, we're gonna turn it to the other side and then we'll leave the hand facing that. Uh, well, you didn't see that, but like that. For the legs, you're basically doing the same thing. Just rotate this to the side to get it out of the way. Bring down the heel spur thing in the back. Spin the foot around. Now, you need to get this toe on the other side. So what you want to do is untab the toe, swivel that around 180. Then you can swivel the other sets of toes around 180 plug them back together and then swivel the entire assembly assembly around 180 and that puts the toes in the right spot and then you want to have this part and not the wheels facing forward drop that lower joint down rotate the upper joint up so same for the other side get this out of the way spin this around untab the big toe swivel that around 180 swivel the other toes around 180 tab them both together, and then swivel the entire assembly around 180. Rock the lower part of the knee down, and the upper part of the thigh forward. Put that around to its full position, and that's done. And this is where you earn your keep. So you have to bring this section out, and then you wanna drop it down, and just get it out of the way. On the back, Make sure that this is untabbed. Bring out the backpack and swivel, if you can see, right here. On this, you want to expand this waist section here. If you get this out of the way, maybe I can show you a little better. There. That's what you're looking for. You just kind of want to expose that. Now this part gets tricky, so I want to try to take as much care as I can. The instructions aren't really great in covering it. You need these two clasps here to grip onto those two pegs. There's one yellow one there and one there. In order to do that, you have a series of hinges. You want to make sure that this first hinge is down and the second hinge is back and that will clasp on. Then as far as this assembly, the head is down like this. Lift the head up just so you can see what's going on. You want this to come down so that it's almost laying flat. And then it curls around and it covers the canopy and it puts this clasp in line with that holder there and then just angle it in a position where it catches. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop there. Make sure that you have space here to get the gorilla head out. It's not the easiest thing to get out but carefully move it through and then get it out of the way. I'm gonna cut because there's an interesting thing that goes on in the head, but that will give you the space to get the robot head down into that cavity. You can also lock all this stuff in here. There, I just came undone. And then you can angle the uh, wheels up. And I gotta put everything back together there. Now the last thing is this gorilla head. Now you see this gray piece here? Normally it's sitting flat. You want it to come up perpendicular to its previous location. So now it's standing straight up. And then that goes and tabs in. And now we just clean them up and we're good. 
And there he is. I still had the hands turned around the wrong way. It's kind of hard to stay oriented while you're getting everything sorted. But, um, you know, and of course, these can you can move these however you want them. But he, he looks cool. We'll go over a couple points of articulation. The arms are obviously the same, so there's no need to go over them except maybe. Let me see. Yeah, the elbow joint's the same. So it's all it all works the same way. Bicep swivel still intact. The head swivels and hinges, so that works well. And the jaw opens to about there and then closes. That's a really nice touch. I think that uh, little stuff like that really makes or breaks a toy experience, in my opinion. And then the universals work the same. And the thigh swivel works. And let's see. And the knee works. You know, it's just, I'll tell you the problem this piece here has a tendency to want to come unlatched and where the wheels sit up into the chest cavity you can see the peg has come undone there it's not a really a strong connection where it plugs in so this piece has a tendency to want to come undone too but you know posed on a shelf you should be fine of course these still work the same way we'll talk about the detailings of the head and then we'll move on so we have the nice blue finish it's, it's breathtaking, as is most of Perfect Effects paint. They really know how to paint a figure. The teeth are all painted silver. The eyes are painted silver around the eyeball, and then the eyeballs themselves, for lack of a better term, are painted red. And then there's silver inside of the nose, silver and gold accents on the side of the head to include those little stripes there in the back. Little stuff like that really makes figures come to life, and it is extremely well done. All right, let's keep it moving. So we're gonna open up the shoulder again. It's Omri, because it's tabbed in. And then we're going to collapse this, collapse this, collapse this, put the shoulder back. We're gonna do that same thing for the other side. Open up, collapse this, collapse this, collapse this, and put it back. We just need to get those arms shorter. Let's get ourselves a little bit more wiggle room. Pull the head out. Pull this piece up. You can just kind of get this stuff out of the way. Pull the head up. Untap, unclasp this from the back. You'll probably notice it's been dying to do that the whole time. You can undo this. I probably should have talked about that. And bring this up. And then we're gonna collapse this back into the robot mode body type which puts it all in alignment for the feet we're going to rotate these to the opposite side and then we're going to rotate there at the ankle tilt all the way up and then we're going to lock them together and rotate the wheels 180 rotate the wings to the other side rotate the shoulder down on both sides With all this junk in here, pull this piece up, extend it, keep track of the head, rotate the whole section around 180. Collapse the Gorilla Head gray hinge, pull the wheel out as you tuck the Gorilla Head in. Be careful because this is a tight little tolerance to lock it back into place and then this comes up. You then wanna angle this rear hinge at almost a 45 degree angle so that these clasps grab here and then that peg hole allows for that peg and it's just uh it's a bit of a delicate dance but i've done it a few times and i made it look easy but it's not as easy as it may seem you want to turn this around and then you want to turn this whole piece around and then you can sit the head up in there. This will collapse down. And these two notches here, if you can sort the waist out, will go in and lock into both kneecaps. And that puts everything in position. I'm gonna get it cleaned up, we'll take a look at it. That part sucks. So here it is, it's massive, it rolls, 
these move and you can articulate the wings however you want. You got to put the hand so that they're holding the wheel, I, I think. Size comparison wise, there it is next to Tiger Tracks. It's, you know, it, it's, I don't know. I, I, maybe it's accurate. Uh, it may very well be. I'm not an expert, but it looks like one of those things where it's like kind of in the spirit of something rather than actually something. You know, it's, it's fine, I guess. It, it, it's, it looks ridiculous, but it might, it might need to look ridiculous. Like it might, uh, like it, that may be the intention. Like it may supposed to look ridiculous, but it's very hard to swallow for me at the moment, so to speak. But, but yeah, this is it. And it can do this. If this is something you're interested in, I'm not exactly sure why you would be though. It's a lot of work to get here and it looks pretty absurd. Unfortunately, this isn't much better, but bring this up, rotate this whole piece around so that the guns are painting, painting, pointing backward. Untab this front piece. The ape head, you want to bring down, rock it up on that hinge, I think. You can rotate here at the wheel. And what you want to do is you want to get the top of this part into the center of the chest. And I'll show you what that looks like later. And then tuck the wheel in. A manner of sorts. And I think that's right. We'll adjust it if need be. So we're going to spin this whole piece here. You can get it down at that base level there. Then we're going to bring this around. We're going to rotate it and we're going to encapsulate that whole piece there. Sheesh. And if you have it right and it'll lock into place like it, it, it's hard to explain unless you have it in hand but that locks into place and then this should line up with that and sort of hold the whole thing together. And now we need to do the old switcheroo with the head. So tuck the head through the canopy, bring the canopy up. You can lock the canopy into place, bring the head up. You might wanna turn around and then lock it down. And then we wanna reverse engineer the feet basically. So just do what you did before, untab them, turn them around 180. And then tab them back in. Same for the other side. Untab. Turn the toes and the big toe around 180. Tab them back in again. Tab the spin the whole thing around. And then you want to bring them down. Get these out of the way. Actually, probably want to go that way. Spin them, and these come up on the opposite side. Then the wheels come down on the opposite side because we're turning it around again. We'll plug that back in while we're on it. The feet can stay in position like this. And then these, I don't know, I guess these sit back. This, you want to unfold. These come off and it's like a parts forming bit. This comes out of there and goes into there. And then re-wraps around and tabs back in. Then this whole arm spins around the other way. The wing spins back around. And this tabs into there, solidifying that. So we're gonna take this off. We're gonna move it down. We're gonna wrap it back around. We're gonna spin this. We're gonna spin the wing, turn plug to plug. Lastly, open this up, flip this down, close that up. We'll clean it up, we'll take a look at it. Yikes, Mac, yikes. So there it is, of course your guns move. Your wings can move, but only here. You got the canopy that opens up. And size comparison wise, 
there's Tiger Tracks. Once again, I'm not sure, th this I think works better than the car mode, but I'm not sure, this this one isn't, it's, it's just this section, right? It's this section that makes everything challenging. But it is an awful lot of work and a lot of effort to get to this mode, so I'm not sure in the end it's utterly worth it, but I think it's more worth it than car mode, if that makes any sense. But I'm a sucker for jets, so that might be some bias coming in. Final thoughts wise, let's get the negatives out of the way, which are few and they mainly come down to engineering. It's just not a fun transformation. It's not enjoyable at all. It's frustrating. The 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 getting to the, the good news is getting to gorilla mode is relatively fun. So I think that's what most people will go back and forth to. So the good news is that is fun. The bad news is getting to either of the vehicle modes is kind of a bear. It's mainly, it comes down to all of the hinging armature systems. It's just, it, it gets confusing. Like, it's very difficult to keep track of everything that you're doing and kind of keep everything in line. The only other issue I have is the shoulders are wonky, like and able to extend the arms, which is smart in terms of engineering for the gorilla mode but it is a wonky system and it does get on your nerves as you're trying to articulate both the robot and the gorilla so it's like it's like i guess it's kind of a cost of doing business type of thing but that doesn't make it any more enjoyable what's wrong it's that review what's wrong with it it took forever maybe you should stop monkeying around am i right am i right as for the positives, it pretty much comes with all the positives you would expect for it to come with being a perfect effect product. That is to say, the materials are great, the hardware is great, all the joints click and clack just the way that you'd like them to. The paint finish is breathtaking per usual. And the sculpt and overall presence of the figure is extremely strong. So ultimately, do I recommend it? Yes, I do. It's beautiful. It's very articulated. You'll be able to get some striking poses and you will have a strong presence of this character on your shelf. That is to say, only if you like this character. It's a really well done piece. It, that doesn't mean it didn't frustrate the living bejeebas out of me as I was going through it, but it is a very well done piece. But I, the figure doesn't mean anything to me because the character doesn't mean anything to me. And as well made as it is, it still didn't end up meaning any more to me. There are some other things that might bother you, like the parts forming sh forearms bit. M my advice to you there would be a get over it, I guess. Otherwise, I think they did a really great job. I just wish it was more enjoyable to get to all four modes. Two modes are kind of a wash and two modes really work. The good news is the two modes that really work are the two modes that I think most people want to work. So I hope that helps. I hope it was somewhat easy to follow. It's, it's, you'll see if you have it in hand. It's not an easy transformation and it's not easy to keep track of all those moving pieces. But I hope that helps in some way, shape, or form. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Till next time, take care.